اللہ کی رضا ہے محبت حسین کی محبت حسین کی اللہ کی رضا ہے محبت حسین کی When the Hussein said, let me just say this, I'll finish in two minutes, inshallah. When the Hussein was in Medina, they were the people in Iraq were sending him letters. Ya Imam, please come. We're ready. Fruits are ripe. We're ready. Thousands of letters. Many of these people were okay. Ya Akhi, I want you to think about the people of Kufa like anybody, they're human beings. Some of them were poor, some of them, they're human beings, they have needs. When the Yazidi authorities, when the Shami people, they realized what was happening in Kufa and that they're sending letters to Hussein, they unleashed their three lethal weapons. Number one, threat. Anyone that they can't get, get him. They paid first people money or they promised them positions. What do you want? 100,000? 1 million? 2 million? Here. No, you don't want too many. You want to be a governor of a, of a province. Here, you're a governor. You stay with us. The people they couldn't bribe, they went and tell them, you don't, we will kill you. That's the second. The third weapon, the Umawi media. The Umawi media that turned everything upside down. The Umawi media at that time that the curse that made the curse of Ali ibn Abi Talib standard in the khutbah of Jumu'ah. That's the kind of Umawi media that people followed suit, no problem. That's the kind of power the Umawi media has. And the Hussein knows how much these people will turn the facts upside down and will make it all anything. Therefore, he took the children, the infants, the two-year-olds, the one-year-old, the six-months-old, women, everyone, he took them with him to Karbala, knowing f very full well that he is dead. He is dying. He's facing death head on. Why? Can you imagine if the Al Hussein, Al Hussein had to wake up the Ummah? He needed to wake up the Ummah from its hibernation. He needed to wake the conscious, Bamir al Ummah, the conscious of the Ummah. He wanted to wake up in the Ummah that need to stand up for a zalim. Ida ra'ayta hadith al Sahih, Ida ra'ayta Ummati tahab wa anta kula li zalim ya zalim. If my ummah cannot say to the tyrant, you're a tyrant, then say goodbye to my ummah, the hadith. And Imam Hussein wanted to revive Islam. He sees the sunnah being changed in front of his eyes, right before him. He needed to do something. But that message could all go wasted if no one can be a witness. He had to take the children and the women. Because he knew, had he gone by himself or few people, the Umawis would have killed him right in the desert with no stand and nothing that to be narrated and they bury him and next day they do janazah on him and they cry oh al Hussein was a good man and he came to give bayah to Amir al-Mu'mineen Yazid but he got killed who are those bugat who killed him we shall kill them all and then they will kill the very same people that they said to kill him not, I'm not telling you something they have not done but I don't have time to elaborate huh? if al Hussein took only few people he would have been Missing in the desert somehow and never to be found. And the Umawi propaganda and media next day would say, he came and he was convinced that everything was good. We are with you, oh Hussein, yeah Hussein. They would be among the people who are reading Janazah on Hussein. They, he knew what Hussein, that if he takes some women only, they may also kill them. But if they, he takes as many as he can, he took the whole Itra with him. I want you to think that when Al Hussein stood in front of the Yazidi army, it was not Al Hussein. It was this Thiqalul Akla' al Asra. It was the second wave standing in front of Yazid. I left you two things. Al Qur'an, the Itra was all embodied.
eat there. This is an ijma of the ikra for those who are Rasulim, just so we talk about that. Now, now we talk about all kinds of ijma, and the thing about ijma, there is really no definition, no ijma on an actual definition of ijma. But uh, some other times we talk about that. I mean, the people, the ulama, they say, you know, what is ijma? I mean, what, what makes ijma? Does the whole ummah know some part of the ummah? No, the ulama, no, the mujtahideen, no, the awam, no, uh, no, only Ahl Sunnah making ijma, no, Ahl Sunnah and Ahl Bid'ah making some other time. Like, yeah, the point is, just so we know, like an ijma on itra, when there is the ijma of the itra, when the whole itra of Ali Muhammad stands on one scale, alone, they are the translators of the Quran, then you have the Quran and Ahl Bid'ah against the Shayateen. I'm not trying to make a Rasuli point here, it's not really. So we don't, you don't think it's not to forget it's not. I am just making an ethical thing. Had Al Hussein left like that, they would have exterm extracted all of them. But he knew that there's going to be thousands of people, and some of those people are naively misguided. Yeah, I mean, they don't want to see children being killed. Then let them go. And those women and children that may survive, they're going to be the Husseini media to the world. They will take the message. We shall die for some to live to take the message of my grandfather. That's why Al Hussein took the women and the children because only those who survived were only women no man survived Karbala except then Abdi because of his sickness and therefore the women and the children were the people that that brought us today the message of Allah they restored the balance from the from the Umawi Sunnah to the Nabawi Sunnah. And they brought it. That's why Al Hussein took as many people, all his family together, because he would have been, the whole message would have been tampered with. It would have been forged, it would have been changed. Ya Hussein ibn Ali, Ya Hussein ibn Ali.